Ja, tack. The title chosen is uh, From Nothing to Something. <clears throat> it's just describe uh, how, how my journey has been from child to, uh, to now. I'll come back to this. And uh, which, what gives you the appetite to continue? This was the question I got from Re René. I, uh, I really didn't want to come, but uh, I didn't felt I had anything to say, so, so I had a problem. <laughs> but uh, when he asked this question, it's just, um, I understood what he was thinking about. Uh, it's probably the many problems I had to change uh, culture from uh, the need of eating, you know, uh, to survive and to enjoy food. And this I will also come back to. I come from uh, Faroe Islands, just in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, not so big. We are only 50,000 people. We are more sheep than we are people. Uh, and mainly, uh, almost all our export is fish. The first we can read about the uh, fairies uh, culture or food is in a very old uh, document which we call the Sheep's Letters from 1298. Uh, it's from an old bishop from Norway which was living in Faroe Island and uh, he was writing about some laws and things like that and there's something about whalings and sheep so we know what they have been eating but not how they have been eating it. The next, we are, uh, next document is a Danish priest, uh, Lucas Tepes. Uh, he was writing a book, uh, Ferro uh, Reserata, uh, from 1673. And uh, he was uh, writing a chapel about food, and that was a poor uh, uh, yeah, text. Uh, it was terrible to read because they were almost eating nothing. It was only fish and meat and grain. So it was a variation of that in different way, but there was nothing else. There were no vegetables and, and things, other things. But he writes in the start of this uh, chapter, other countries' locations are praised for their great wealth, several metals, minerals, precious stones, pearls, wines, and grain, but all this God and nature has denied the fairies. And um, that's some way true, but... Um, there are some good things, but um, that will, I will come to uh, as I will speak. Uh, um, the circumstance have, has been very poor through the time, you know. Everything has been, been self-sufficiency. Uh, whaling, fishing, and uh, catching birds and eggs. And you can see bacalao in the right uh, bottom there the famous bacalao. It was probably the only thing we had to export at that time, uh, or 400 uh, to 200 years ago. Fish is our main export. And uh, nearly all family has a boat, a little boat like that. My father has that boat. And we eat everything on the fish, liver, hat, and everything. And we, uh, we have fresh fish, and then we have also what we call fermented fish and aged fish. It's, uh, there was a guy talking about umami. That's an umami bomb, you can call it. And then we have dried fish. This we also use for uh, meat. Uh, the climate is perfect to hanging something out. If it if it's, wasn't for this climate, I think... Uh, no one was living on the island because there was no freezer and there was no vegetables and if you only can use the meat for two days, there will not be any uh, fairies people. There was also birds, you can see uh, in the right upper picture there, there are four cooked birds and there, are, there is a um, spongy cake. They were they filled the uh, birds with this spongy cake. I don't know why. I think it's because they wanted it to stretch longer. <clears throat> the 
food has always been uh, done uh, not so culinary. Everything is put in one pot. If you have uh, meat, plopper, or potatoes, everything in the same pot. And it was not a matter of enjoying, it was a matter of surviving. Lamb, we have uh, 7,000 uh, lambs. We are importing 100,000 from Iceland and 10,000 from New Zealand. And here we have the same, we have uh, fermented meat, we hang it out. We have dried meat. And you can see it's... Uh, where they are going. Whaling. Uh, this was very vital at that time in old, old days, but today it's just dying out slowly. And uh, one of the reasons is because the health environment uh, tells us to stop to eating it because it's so full of uh, mercuries because of the pollution of the big countries in the Atlantic Oceans. Vegetables and fruits. You can see um, it's very difficult to make fields to uh, cultivate on when uh, the mountains are like that, and there's a lot of stones and things in the earth. So that's one reason. And it's only 7% of Faroe Island which is cultivated, and that's with all the houses where they are standing. You must choose between if you like to have vegetables or you would like to have cows, because you can't have both. So today we have um, mainly cows. Um, the weather is, um, is uh, maritime, uh, sub-arctic climate, which um, says that in the winter it is not so cold. It's minus 4 usually, but it can be minus 10, but uh, that's very seldom. Uh, in the summer, it's usually between 10 and 20 degrees. You can see uh, the storm in the sea there, uh, how tremendous it is. And if you have vegetables, they will be ruined the same day, probably. I went to Iceland and um, studied biology and... Uh, there I experienced uh, many good things about food. I'd never been uh, so much out in, uh, to eat in Faroe Islands because there are no restaurants, really restaurants. There are steak houses and pizzeria. And uh, I came, uh, as uh, Rasmus Kofod told you about this picture of um, this guy, uh, Inspector Kolbeck, that was also one of the reasons why I became chef. That was when I had seen this here picture in, uh, in uh, Smago Bihag, a Danish magazine. And I tried to come in to him, but uh, I, uh, he, he did not uh, get allowed to get uh, apprentice, and uh, it lasted for one year. And then I started at this restaurant, Restaurant Commandanten. And it was a usually good restaurant, but you, uh, suddenly we were, were probably one of the best uh, known restaurants in Scandinavia at that time. Uh, to come from Faroe Islands and uh, come to uh, probably one of the best restaurants in Denmark, that's a uh, uh, yeah, revolution in my head, you know. You're used to catch your, your own food, or uh, my father was catching the food, you know, uh, Five days a week we were eating something he had been catching or fishing. And uh, if it should be fine, it was probably Danish meatballs or, or something like that. But it was no fine food. And uh, people were eating to, uh, to survive, not to enjoy, really. I came back to Faroe Islands, and I had no ab ambition to be in Denmark because... Um, uh, I didn't feel uh, that I had anything to do in Denmark in, uh, as a chef because um, my goal, uh, when I was working at the uh, Commandant, it had slowly been building up a, a goal of what I, what I had in my head. And I went back to Faroe Island and started this restaurant gourmet. 
And that was very ambition when you only have pizzeria and uh, steak houses in Fair Island. So, and I, I got invited to come to uh, Denmark to this uh, new Nordic cuisine. And there I met a lot of people. Rene was one of them. And there I heard some ideas I, I had no, never been thinking about before. Because I, I was living in Faroe Islands, you were always eating at home what you did have at home. And um, at this French restaurant, uh, which I was uh, working at, at Commandanten, we did import everything from France and Italy and uh, other places. Huh? And now, sadly, they started to talk to use what is outside your window. And um, this makes sense in my head because uh, when I was starting this restaurant and they came uh, tourists and things like that, they were always asking about, um, why are you uh, making French or Danish food? Why do you not have anything fairies? And this question I got a lot. And, and uh, the problem was I couldn't just do fairies food because then the fairies people will not come because they were eating it each day. Huh? So they were a little tired of it. So uh, after this talk, it makes sense in my head what I should do slowly, but uh, not right away, some months after. And uh, the next problem uh, or challenge was to I was not allowed to serve all these hair things. So I could not serve fairies lamb. I was serving Icelandic lamb. So I could choose between to lie or <laughs> tell them as it was. But um, um, I, uh, I'm not lying. So <laughs> I told the truth that it was Icelandic lamb. Sometimes we were cheating and using fairy Islam instead. We were not allowed to it. Today we are allowed to serve this, these things. Uh, we have used a lot of time to talk with politicians and uh, businessmen to get this possible because the country is so little that you cannot make an uh, industry out of it to slaughter lambs and things like that. No one will buy fairies. It's too cheap, not too, too expensive, and, uh, and uh, they're always buying the cheapest things. So we were the only one who were buying it. So next year we will try to get all the shellfish. It's amazingly good, but uh, we are not allowed to serve it. What gives you the appetite? Then we come back to this question here. These here two words, appetites and ambition, are a little similar. If you think about appetite, it's something you smell, um, you are seeing something, or, and you get a eager to get this. And it's the same with the ambition. You get a eager to do something. So my appetite has been the ambition to change things, change things from what they were to something else. Um, I'm very proud of my old uh, culture, but um, it's not so. What's, uh, it's not updated to now. Uh, that's the problem. Huh? People should not think that we are cave people living there. So, uh, in many uh, relations, you know, uh, to get food up to the present day also change other aspects in the society. For example, if you would invite someone out to eat. We could not at that moment serve wine because it was not allowed to serve wine. So people thought we were a little stupid. So <laughs> it has been a hard work to come to where we are today. There are not so many chefs who are talking about food on Faroe Island. So the mostly they are just working and doing this uh, pepper steak or what they are doing. Huh? So uh, I have felt uh, very alone. Uh, sometimes, but it's very good to come to things like this because you get the courage again to do something. It gives me appetite to see that things are shaping up and people think uh, that uh, this is not so stupid what we are doing. Some are angry because we are changing the old culture, but uh, it's okay. With the new restaurant Cox, 
we have a new start. Cox is walking in the beaten, uh, off the beaten track. Um, we are, um, like most uh, fine dining or gourmet restaurant, a little below. The things we are thinking of is to make nice food and get people to enjoy themselves. René said about Cernvillouf that uh, in a speech to Cernvillouf, the Cern is uh, properly uh, the alphabet for, uh, the uh, culinary alphabet for Norma. And uh, we are looking for our alphabet. We have not found all our letters yet, but um, today we are focusing on what we have, and then we are taking the challenges as they come. Wild plants were the first thing I was trying to work with because I couldn't serve meat and things like that. So Angelica and uh, Cochlearia was two of the major uh, plants in Faroe Islands to survive because there were no vegetables. There, there were only those two which can give you see with our mind. We have here Portolac. It's fantastic because uh, when the sea is coming over the Portolac, it's just tasting like uh, oysters. Another thing we have done with it uh, last month is to put them in a blender with a little water and oil, and it's just like an emulsion. It's uh, without eggs and things like that. It's get, getting thicker as it's standing, so we can put it on things and things like that. And it has a fantastic uh, oyster uh, flavor, but oysters uh, taste of salt, so it's maybe what make the difference. Vegetables, we do not have so many. We have only, if we should serve all the vegetables for some families a year, we would only have for 300 families a year. Because you, you must choose between uh, to have cows or have vegetables. Because there is, so, uh, there is no field to uh, grow this on. But what we have is fantastic. Uh, René is writing about these turnips in uh, his last book, where he's getting a turnips to coffee. Uh, one day he's eating at Faroe Island. And it's just like to eat a juicy apple. You can see how it's transparent here, and it's not only a slice. We have carrots and we have potatoes. Uh, in greenhouses, we had tried to make strawberry last year, and it was fantastic. Uh, probably the best I ever have tasted. And the reason is probably because the sun is the limited factor uh, in the growth in Faroe Island and, and the heat in the earth. So it's growing very slowly, but it's sucking everything up from the air, not from the earth, and uh, getting this fantastic taste. We could probably uh, do more and uh, we will probably next year. We have not so many, uh, so many activity of uh, microorganisms in the earth, which makes the uh, vegetables also very sweet, because when there are many uh, organisms in the earth, they will attack the vegetables, and they will do layer outside, which makes the vegetables bitter. And that we do nearly not have. Um, I invited Sir Vyuf to come to Fair Island. Uh, I met him at a party, and I called him. I had, uh, I was just thinking, uh, I will call him and I will uh, invite him next week. And I, j I did so, and right away he found four new things which we never had seen before in Fair Islands. And he he has 150 products on the, uh, what he is doing, but, and uh, he says we can probably do the half of it. And um, we will probably never do for whole, the whole Faroe Islands, but we will do for the restaurant. That will be fantastic to show people what we have. We have the Faroe's lamb, which is fantastic. Uh, Cox is getting uh, the lambs from this island here, a little island. <clears throat> it's always going on the mountain. They're using the mussel a lot. If, uh, when they are using the mussel, they make also uh, taste because you know uh, the tenderloin and sirloin is not used so much, so it uh, tastes not so much. So more use of the mussel, more taste. 
Um, it's grassing the whole year outside, which makes it uh, very strong in the taste and just like wild. There are two kinds of fat in it. It's uh, white fat and there's transparent fat. And the transparent fat is the old fairies uh, lamb, but we have imported from Iceland and other places with the white fat, so now it's mixed. But if it has this transparent fat, it's fantastic. It's just like um, Kobe meat, because it's melt very easy and it tastes fantastic. And especially if you are hanging it up. We have two kinds of cut. But this one is a very special faro bank cut. It's living in a very restricted area. Uh, four uh, light dots uh, to the left, and the first one there. Uh, the stream between uh, Shetland or Hetland and Faroe Island is tremendous. There is 2,500 meters deep. They say in one second there is coming as much as it is fresh water in the whole world. So it's taking, you know, all the food up, and uh, and when it uh, comes here over to the ferry bank, it's going in stream like this. So there's always enough food in the ferry bank. Um, it's much. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, it's not falling apart so easy. So it's a fantastic uh, structure in the in the meat, and the taste is just like shrimps and things like that. Uh, it's a little different. It has two extra bones in the vertebrate, and it's uh, white inside uh, the belly flap, and that's why we got so good price for it when we were selling it to Bacalao, because uh, you will see a white instead of gray inside. It's uh, growing three times as fast as usual cut. I will lightly go through some uh, of our uh, products, some of our products and our usual menu at Cox. This is our uh, lobster, ask René about it, it's fantastic. And the reason why the cut and lobster is so good, are so good is because the temperature is steady in the water. In other countries, it's uh, ranging 10 degrees, you know, changing uh, all the time. Here, it's only a half degree to one degree, which is, it is changing. So it's very stable. That means the meat is, go is also more stable and firm. Lumpfish, first year we have got eggs from lumpfish. No one was selling uh, fish in Faroe Island when I came there. You, uh, they were selling, you know, big uh, trucks out of the country, but not to restaurants. <laughs> so it's a new thing. So first year with the uh, lump fish. Here we have um, uh, clams, or what do you call it, uh, scallops, queen scallops, very small, and monkfish. Um, at Cox, we are making, you know, international f food, uh, global, but uh, we try to make it very easy or uh, simple because we are only three in the kitchen, so it has to be <laughs> very uh, easy to do. This is the backbone of a um, fairy's cut. It's only the region of uh, the stomach of the cut. Here we have a crisp of dried fish and a dried skin of place. This is like a starter. And this um, an old man told me he was uh, fishing uh, shrimps and he, will, he, will, he would take them and go down to the engine and put them there to dry. And that was fantastic to eat in the evening. So I was thinking about this and I went down and uh, put them in the dehydrator, but it didn't function, so, but I've forgotten them for two days, and then I went uh, in to throw them out, and I tried, and then they were perfect, the perfect crack in them. Five times celery young, served with uh, dilt oil and Danish apple juice, fairy salmon, and uh, the salmon tastes tremendous good because it is eating fish the leftover in, in the rest, no, in the filet uh, 
factories, you know, uh, the skin and things like that is going to the food to this salmon with some ferries plant on top. Crab, lumpfish eggs, Cletonia sibirica, and uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, bird grass. And this is the lobster. Um, we fry only fry it on the pan a little and put some um, uh, seaweed salt on top. And seaweed salt was the only salt we had before, uh, for 150 years ago. This is the only salt. You must burn your own salt. Call it black salt. Put it in this jar and lit the, the pine and the, uh, then serve it like this. Halibut and this uh, various turnips. Uh, this is duck with the uh, crisp of the skin on top. And various lamb. We cannot serve fermented lamb because it's too strong for foreign people. So we have uh, fried the, uh, the uh, fermented lamb and then we have powderized it so we can put it on top of the meat. But about three years we will serve really fermented meat because uh, that's the way we are going. This is a uh, low age. When I was uh, putting my youngest to sleep, I fall down in his pillow and I was smelling something strange. Um, and I didn't know what it was, but I thought it was a lacquerist, but then I realized it was love age and cinema. Um, on top there is, um, what do you call it, uh, seaweed, a lightly caramelized seaweed, and a granite with grass and sorrel, or this sour plant. And at the end, uh, a sour milk dessert with uh, fresh cheese, cucumber and radish, and uh, the important thing here is um, uh, the sugar, the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, estragon, well, tarragon, yeah. Tarragon uh, sugar on top. We have, uh, when we make dessert, we have only a few things. We have rhubarbs, we have milk, we have beer, and we sometimes use uh, chocolate. But uh, that's the only thing we have to do. From nothing to something. That was it. And um, when I uh, think about this um, title here, we started with nothing. Today we are in the beginning to, to try to find something and try to find something for the future. Thank you. I, I just want to make I just want to make a comment uh, to life because I, I, but life is is too modest with himself basically so I'm I'm gonna praise him a bit <laughs> so on your islands there where nobody really wants to eat the food that you do they want a piece of overcooked meat you can't even get the products that you need, you change legislation, you go bankrupt, why do you keep doing it? Why is it that you keep doing it and you're changing things for the whole region for the flavor? And this is what he's doing. This is what I thought was so courageous and influential that he is sort of just keep going no matter what people say to him. And there's a lot of people that are making fun of him that thinks that this is not even food of the general population. So in my book, life is a He's a very, very important figurehead of food in, um, in, in the Faroe Islands, in the world, really, because he has an undefinable sort of passion and drive and commitment and patience that I, when I ask him, he doesn't even know where it comes from. And but I never ask you if you are a masochist, but if you're not, no. Pessimist. <laughs> so, you <Ask> know, <laughs> you're a pessimist, but yet you're still there. You're still trying, yeah. you're still trying to grow vegetables, you're still trying to take it from nothing to something. Yes. And I think that is just very, very special. And I think we should clap again for life. <laughs> Thank you.